and obey His voice. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which He swore to them. That covenant, people, is Christ and Him crucified. It's not by our legalism or our holy works. He will not forget what He did at the cross. The same covenant He made with Abraham, He walked through the bullets that Abraham had laid down. He Himself put Abraham to sleep. Y'all, you see, sometimes we try to make a covenant with God and we try to keep it, and every time we break it, every one of us has broken it. Every one of us has fallen short and from the glory of God and gone astray. But thank God, Jesus Christ made a covenant with Himself at the cross. Amen. Amen. And made a promise because He could swear by none greater. He swore by Himself, it says in Hebrews. And if your faith is in His covenant made with Himself, praise God, that's when you're in. That's where you're saved. But if you're trying to earn something or trying to make a covenant with God by your own self-will and perform that thing, you will not make it. You won't get off the ground on legalism and self-righteousness. You will not get off the ground when Jesus says, come up hither. It's only going to be by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. It wasn't by their self-righteousness in Goshen. It was by the blood over the doorpost that the death angel didn't take them out. And many in the church are teaching today, oh, it's by your self-righteousness. It's by your holy walk. It's by everything you've done to be perfect. It's by your outer exterior. It's by your tithe. It's by sowing the seed you meet a need. No, Jesus did it all at the cross. He said it is finished. Praise yeah. God. We can put our trust in Him and our faith in Him and that will break those chains that's binding your sin inside your heart. There's no way your righteousness, your self-righteousness can break that sin that is bound in your heart. You must put faith in what Christ did at the cross, His blood, and then the Holy Ghost has the leeway and the right to come in. He will not come in through a lie. He will not come in through our self-efforts. He will not come in through our methods. He will not come in through all the things that we make up. He will not come in through men's books or programs in the church. He will not come in by your tithing. I'm going to sow a sin when you need. I'm going to tithe and the windows of heaven are going to open up. No! He only comes in by your faith in what Jesus did because the windows of heaven opened up and the blessing came down, praise God. Look at Matthew chapter 3 and you'll see what I'm talking about. And he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Now we function by the Holy Spirit. Oh man, I don't know why I went into all that. That was free. <laughs> oh, vigilant means to keep watch and be alert. Go with me to Luke chapter 21, 25. Keep your finger there. We're coming back. Ooh, praise God. Luke chapter 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And the powers, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Praise God. He tells us in Luke 12, 35, Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. Is your light burning this morning? Mm -hmm. And you yourselves like unto men who wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him at midnight. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. These were like the wise men. They were watching. They were watching. Because out of 400 years, <clears throat> the Lord hadn't uttered a word. There was no prophecies given between Malachi and Matthew. If you're looking from the Old Testament to the New, from 400 years, there was nothing. It was just darkness. No word from God, no prophet risen up, and they were sitting there watching, and all of a sudden, here comes this star. Praise God. Kind of like now. There's nothing but mass confusion. 25,000 different denominations. People, are, we're born in Babylon. We don't know who to believe. Who's right over here? Who's right over there? The Baptist, the Methodist, the Pentecostal, the Lutheran, the Episcopalian, the Catholic Church, this. There's all kind of crazy stuff, and nobody knows who's right. It's confusion. It's dark. Mm -hmm. But there he is, coming to star, praise God. Amen. A ladder rain that's coming to the church. 
the end time church will be built up like the first church, amen. But you're going to have to come out of your mess and come out of legalism, come out of denominationalism and all this mess of man's doctrines that come into the word of the living God. And then the Holy Ghost will fall upon you and you'll have that latter rain, amen. amen. And that star will shine and you will see the star. Without that, you will not see what's coming upon the earth. We must come into Him like a little child. Mm. Most of us are not doing that. We're wise in our own eyes. We're wise in men's precepts, but we're not wise in the Word of God. But these true seekers were wise in the Word of God. But let me keep going, and I'll show you God's people didn't know what was going on. First of all, the prophecy to confirm these Gentile wise men is in Isaiah 60, verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. These men had to come from 1,264 miles away. Just Yemen alone, from Yemen to Jerusalem, where one of them came from, was 1,264 miles away. Then you had Ethiopia. And then they met up. Now, they, they, they weren't all together. They came from different countries. 1,265 miles. 64 miles. Don't think about it. They had to ride camels. Now, I don't know about you, but I never rode a camel. Have you ever rode a camel? But they don't look very comfortable. <laughs> it don't look like a Lexus to me or a Mercedes Benz. I didn't see no air conditioner on a camel. Or a heater on a camel. You know? <laughs> so through the desert, where in the days it's 130 degrees some days, and at night it's freezing. No heater, no AC. They're riding through the desert, people. That's a long ways to ride. The reason why I'm saying this is because sometimes on our walk, on our life's journey, waiting for the Lord to return, sometimes we're hot and sometimes we're cold. And it's not easy. We're in a desert land sometimes. And it's bumpy. And the ride is uncomfortable. We think when we get saved, everything's going to be hunky-dory and everything's okay. But sometimes when the life goes south, we get upset because it's not comfortable. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Because yeah. Satan's going to war against you. Yeah. Have you have you had a warfare in the last two weeks? Come on. Amen. Am I talking to anybody? Oh, yeah. I mean, matter of fact, the last few years. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the, the, the fire has been stirred up. And yeah, Satan is yeah. wroth, and the last few weeks has been even worse. Yeah. And he's trying to cause division because united we stand, divided we fall. Amen. And then he attacks your family Amen. and tries to divide your family. Amen. Hello? Right. It's not very comfortable going through the desert, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> but the passion inside their heart for Jesus kept them going. Amen. That's what you got to have. Amen. That's why it says in Psalms 91. He has set his love upon me. Therefore, I shall deliver him. I shall deliver him because he set his love upon me. Not because he was perfect. Not because he did everything just right. It was because he set his love. You've got to have that passion to keep going. 